Alright, yo, this is it. This is the one. This is this for this one. This one is the. This one's the one. Little Sims. Great area. Gray area. You know, no black, no white. Gray area. Specifically the gray area. In the in the in-between area in the midst of black and white. The gray area. Right. It's the latest album from Little Sims, a rapper from the UK. I've been following her for a while. Uh, checked out her last few releases. Thought they were good. You know, I thought she was definitely really entertaining as a rapper, as a, as, as, a, as a front woman. She was definitely really captivating. They were definitely good. I was like, okay, I'll keep an eye out for Little Sims in the future. We have this new one called Grey Area. It's comprised of 10 songs and 35 minutes of music, which is cool. And let me tell you, those 35 minutes are great. It's a great album. It's fantastic. This is, this is excellent. I love this. I think this is the best album of the year so far. It's awesome. Please go listen. The tone of this record is quite gloomy. Uh, the beats here are very, are very blunt, very direct. The, the, I think all of the instrumentation is live. But with these beats, you can expect some really gritty, uh, distorted bass lines, like in the first couple songs, some really crisp, uh, really impactful drums, very dirty percussion on this thing. Uh, some really somber piano too on songs like Selfish and Pressure. The general aesthetic of this album just reads to me is a little bit gloomy and melancholic. However, it does kick off with a very confident start with the opening couple of tracks, Offense and Boss. I think the first track is one of the most triumphant on the album where we hear Sims just really unapologetically bragging about her skill as an MC, saying really like kind of out there and ridiculous lines, like when I'm on my worst day, I'm like Shakespeare, I want a birthday cake and it's not even my birthday. And I like how the hook on this track is just asserting this mindset of like, yeah, fuck whatever you think, I'm gonna say whatever the hell I wanna say. And that's why the lines on this track are just so kind of indulgent and braggadocious. I think it really embodies that sort of like cocky persona. And the following track, Boss, is equally as direct and impactful and hard hitting, but I do think this is the first track where it becomes a little bit clear that the person rapping isn't all the way happy. Or that they have been wronged in some way in the past because the hook has these sort of shrieks of stop fucking with my heart. This uh, I don't need that stress. And it really sounds like she's just really fed up and tired. And that kind of leads me to believe when I, when I first heard the track, it led me to think that the album was soon going to get very personal and reflective maybe a bit darker. And the tracks Pressure, Sherbet Sunset, Selfish, and Therapy kind of confirmed that inkling that I thought the album would get a little bit more introspective and broken and tortured. And, and these tracks at points really had me like quite emotionally stirred, especially Sherbet Sunset. The track Selfish reads to me as if Little Sims has kind of conflicted with herself and her moral ground and whether or not she's sure that she's any better than the people who have wronged her beforehand. Uh, and I think the, the hook from Cleo Soul is absolutely gorgeous. This hook is actually honestly tear-jerking and something about the way she sings I find insanely evocative on this track and then you have the track Sherbet Sunset which yeah this track is by far the most confessional and revealing song here where on the final verse particularly she seems to go into great detail kind of just informing the listener of the reason why she kind of struggles to trust people uh, which is sort of like an ongoing theme I've picked up from this album is like trust issues and shit like that like like betrayal is just something I was just catching on, on a few lines on tracks like there are, there are loads of lines sort of like teasing towards the idea that someone's really fucked her over and yeah on this track Sherbet Sunshine she's talking about like a partner she had that she was really in love with who cheated on her and got someone else pregnant there's a line that really hit hard on this track where she says she, she wanted this person to be in her Grammy speech you know she wanted to like to stay with this person but they just wronged her and now she just feels like she can't trust anyone and then playing the album again a second time having heard this track and knowing the full context actually made me see quite a few songs in like a different light which just makes this album really rewarding to me like there were just loads of subtle references to this event sort of like kind of lurking throughout the album's track list and the line here or there like I would just pick it up and when I revisit it again like it all kind of became really clear just why this album is quite as somber as it is but there are still some up-tempo moments like those first two tracks are quite upbeat and, and, and aggressive and then you have the song 101 FM which has a pretty bouncy melodic beat too there's also the track Venom which is incredibly intense the strings at the beginning of this track are bone chillingly frightening they are so fucking fricative and, and fucking tension winding and her flow is rapid fire too. And I love the way this track just all kind of like connects. It all just kind of falls into place kind of when the beat drops. And then there's this just like lurking sense of like paranoia and like lingering fear I get from the beat when it when it like drops in. It sounds, it's the beat sounds like, and her voice too, it sounds like she's constantly on the lookout for anyone that's trying to bring her down. And she's just like t completely on edge. Just generally, just on this album and a lot of these tracks, she just sounds completely fed up with the bullshit and just completely prepared to just fight back against it. And, and therapy as well. This 
this track is sort of talking about how because of all of this she sort of prefers to keep to herself and her lack of trust for people seems to prevent those that want to help her from being able to do so. There are also a few lines on various tracks here that sort of allude to the idea of like not being aware that you're being deceived by someone simply because you're just so infatuated with them and you're just kind of blinded by that but it's only when you step away from it or when it's over you realize that they, they weren't to be trusted. The closing track too, Flowers, I think this track is actually a really appropriate and hard-hitting finish because for one the beat is fucking sex on this track oh my god the instrumental here is heavenly michael kiwanuka's feature is quite quite minimal but it's it's all the more impactful because of it really I, I feel like he he had just the right amount of presence on the track but those repeated lines that come on like halfway through the track about just sort of continuously kind of taking another hit or just like getting indulged in drugs uh, i think is really really powerful because it just kind of shows that after all of this shit she's been through that the one thing that she can truly depend on has become just substances and it's just like there's no one left to trust and i just feel like that moment really kind of hits home like the gravity of everything that's happened on this album i think it's a really appropriate way to finish things off in a way that genuinely does strike a chord are my problems with the album i think the song wounds whilst i love sort of the lyrical idea of like just following along with people that might be morally horrible but like you, you just need to survive and you're just sort of clinging on to whatever you can and the way it kind of questions the mindset of people who get involved in very dangerous activities i think that's really interesting but on repeated listens the beat i think is actually probably one of the more stale ones hook is a little bit of a slog too in my opinion it's a little bit of a sluggish chorus and the track 101 fm uh is really out of place to me the beat is is kind of fun whilst the song is is pretty likable it's pretty pretty vibrant it's sort of a lyrically it's just sort of a reflection of back when times were simpler she makes reference to like playing crash bandicoot and mortal kombat at one point which i thought was cool but like yeah so basically just reflecting on like the past when things weren't as you know bleak but uh, i just think in the album's context right after venom and all these tracks that are more kind of like you know melancholic and, and, and direct and impactful it just this just is a bit of an immersion breaker for me right in the middle of the album in my opinion even though it's still an enjoyable song for what it is i feel like it works better as a single as opposed to an album cut but yeah overall i think this is awesome i think it's a fantastic album and i'm really happy for her i think she came through with something brilliant i swear to god if that curse so has been on the screen the whole time. I think the potential I was catching on a Stillness and Wonderland has been really brilliantly realized on this one. You know, it's it's concise, it's it's emotionally riveting, it's got tons of personality, the production is great, the hooks are solid. Uh, yeah, man, I'm really digging this thing. I think it's fantastic. I highly recommend that feeling it. 8 out of 10. Love this album. It's fucking great. Probably my personal favorite album so far this year. And those are my thoughts on Great Area by Little Sims. Please go listen to it. I'll see you on the next review. Thanks for watching. Bye!